So as you know, I just converted my 4 AGE to turbo, meaning I have to adjust my tune to actually be suitable for a turbo application and I'm going to show you how to do that now as well as doing the first little steps on the tuning side because adjusting it for turbo is just really not that difficult and I kind of explained that on the base map side as well. As always, if you have any questions, need help with, you, with your tune, need help with your build, or you need tuning services done, hit me up on Instagram. I'm always open for messages. First of all, in my case, because I was running ITBs, I am converting from TPS to MAP. So that means I don't run off of a TPS-based uh, ignition and fueling control anymore but I'm using the map. Even if you run ITBs while on NA or in NA applications, it is beneficial to uh, run it at TPS because it might be a bit smoother. In my experience, even with using map with a turbo application, it's not that bad. You don't have any real downsides. The car will still drive very smooth. So I set both my fueling calculations as well as my spark calculations to map so that we can use this on both of them. There is a method to use TPS in combination with map, but in my experience, it's not really necessary. This might be something necessary if you were running a really big turbocharger, but even with my setup, which is quite big, a GT28 or GTX28 on a 1.6 liter, um, that's not really necessary. The first thing I did is I adjusted my spark table. On the full version of Tuna Studio, you can click the two arrows on the bottom left corner and then you can rescale your table to boost, to accept boost or boost pressure. At the maximum I'm looking for a minimum of 20 kPa over my uh, boost target or boost I want to run. So if you want to run like one bar or 14 PSI, I would set it to like 1.2 bar just to have some headroom. If the boost ever spikes above that, the tune can still account for that. Or also if you want to uh, up the boost, but you don't have your laptop with you, maybe uh, your tune is at least kind of prepared uh, or if a line pops off or something. On spark tuning, in my case, because my engine is relatively high compression, uh, I also reduce timing when in boost. Uh, usually on a engine that's about nine to one compression, my go-to is about 20 degrees of ignition timing uh, at one bar or 14 PSI. At close to red line, that's pretty safe usually but it always depends on your setup. Something really safe you can go off of, which is kind of a rule of thumb, is using one degree of retard every one PSI of boost. So if you had 30 degrees of timing NA, you were looking at or would be looking at 16 degrees of timing at 14 PSI. And depending on how much boost you would run above that, even less. But that is a very, very, conservative and um, is most likely going to cause high exhaust gas temperatures because low ignition timing does that and that's not really that desirable. But as I said, it will get you uh, to a point where you can actually drive and can make boost and can tune the car until you get to a dyno or you can use dead cans or some other device to monitor knock and advance timing further. Then I went into the uh, VE table, which for some reason by switching to uh, to map was kind of redone anyway from 400 kPa to 0 kPa, which is kind of weird, but I'm just going to redo the whole thing and I'm going to do the same thing I was doing with the spark table. So in my case, I was aiming for about one bar of boost. So I'm going to put in 1.2 or 220 kPa at the maximum and scale that down appropriately to about 30 to 35 where my engine is running at idle. So whatever uh, kPa value your engine is running at idle, just uh, scale it down to that or maybe slightly lower so that you also have some room in overrun. The scaling here is important. You don't want to go in 50 kPa steps or anything in boost in the VE table, especially 
my experience is 20 kPa in boost is where the sweet spot is and 10 kPa steps off boost is the minimum you have to go for. If you go any larger than that, um, you, the scaling is kind of very rough. While yes, it, it interpolates, or so the ECU interpolates between two cells, yes, um, the accuracy is not that great when you have a difference of 50 kPa in between those two cells. So make sure you have equivalent spacing or have equivalent scaling. In my case on this tune, I am also just putting in normal VE values. So um, as I explained in my base map video, I'm putting in about 50 or 40 to 50 in the idle cells. I'm putting in about 60 to maybe 70 VE in the part throttle cells. So between 50 and 80 kPa and I'm going to put about 85 to 100 in the cells that are full throttle but NA, so around 100, depending on your setup, that might be a bit lower if you are NA, but in this case, it's around 100. And on the boost cells, I would just put in a little more. The amount of how much more is actually not defined by how much boost you are running, but how well the engine can take boost. It's kind of a bit weird to explain. In my case, or in my recommendation would be just put about 30 to 40% more VE into your cells that you are going to reach when you are at your desired boost level and scale that down to the cells that are not in boost or to your 100 kPa cells. But you still might want to take that up 10% or so just to be on the safe side when using, for example, autotune so that it regulates that down automatically and it goes from a more of a richer side of things to the roughly correct fueling and not from the leaner side of things which can blow up things pretty quickly if you for example do longer pulls or if you for example are in boost longer than you actually uh, knew it was on the cell that is the most top cell i would even put in a little more ve because just as a safety if you ever hit that you rather want it to be a bit rich than a bit lean because if for some reason a line pops off whatever uh, if you hit that just make sure that it's going to be a bit richer and you don't blow up stuff and hopefully don't bend rods etc the afr target table is very similar while um, we are talking about afr values here uh, they need to be richer than NA by quite a big margin. Here, the scaling is not as important, but the values are actually important you need to put in. While the same values apply in the naturally aspirated cells, so up to 100 kPa, on cells that are above that, so over 100, uh, it's important that as soon as you hit a small amount of boost even it's only even if it's only 0.2 bar or something you already go down to about 12.5 to 1 afr the reason for that is because boost does increase combustion chamber pressure and therefore heat and also exhaust gas temperatures at your peak boost level you want to look at a AFR value of about 11.8 to 1 to 11.5 to 1. That's about ideal. It is not ideal for the maximum power, but it is ideal for cooling the cylinders while you are on full throttle and while you are on boost. Some people take to, uh, tend to make it a lot richer also. While it's not really necessary, it can help with um, detonation, but to be honest, 11.5 should be the maximum. Get rid of any detonation if you are running reasonable timing levels. It's also a good idea on the boost levels that are, you are not trying to achieve to put in actually a richer amount so that while, when auto-tune is 
hitting those cells for some reason that it makes it a bit richer rather than leaner. All right, so we are just also now looking into driving a bit. It's just going to be the first few driving steps that you're going to do with your turbo build. Let's say you just put the turbo kit in and you would just wanna see how it works. I would advise you also put in a boost cut at a lower pressure than you are actually trying to achieve and also don't run a boost controller yet. Try to tune it to your um, wastegate pressure, so nothing over that yet. So you can familiarize with the tuning setup itself. And after that is done, only then go on to tuning with an electronic boost solenoid. In my case, I am just taking also things very slowly, uh, also because I just installed the kit. And what I'm doing, I'm just driving around in my town very, very slowly. I am get getting into boost very, very slightly. So this means only hitting 0.1 bar or 0.2 bar at most and seeing how the autotune actually reacts to the, this. If it adds fuel, if it remo removes fuel in certain areas and seeing if it needs a particular amount of fuel in certain areas or if it needs a drastic amount more or less than I put in. Because putting in a amount that creates an AFR of like 9.0 obviously does not make much sense and the engine will sputter and it won't run correctly. You will see that with autotune when it corrects it automatically. And from there on, you can manually adjust it down and adjust the whole range a bit down so that actually it doesn't happen. And so you are more in line with what autotune suggests. So making autotune do the first few things is correct. And what I always also tell you is don't rely on autotune 100%. While yes, it will work and it may get you to 70, maybe 80% there, you will have to do some stuff by yourself. That's very important. Don't just use autotune and uh, say, yeah, well, autotune is going to sort the fuel tuning out for me and I don't have to do anything. That's not true. Autotune, while it is a great tool to have, it will only get you into the ballpark. You will have to do some manual tuning. I'd say 80% of the tuning process in general is manual and about 20% is uh, auto-tune. When I am on a client's car and tuning it, I let auto-tune run most of the time and I sit besides auto-tune and almost the whole time auto-tune is running, I'm always correcting stuff so that it actually autotune suggests where I need to take out fuel and then I just expand that range and I make it bigger or rather I expand the uh, changes autotune does. So I'm kind of um, seeing what needs to be done and uh, those changes that autotune does start to do, I continue. And in the end, it's a good idea to smooth everything out so that there are no spikes or low spots in your fuel map, just as you learned in Fast and Furious 1. It's your fuel map. It's got a nasty hole. That's why you're unloading in third. That's it from me for this first part, kind of, of the fuel tuning for boost or for within boost. And uh, see you next time when we are actually going into full throttle and are seeing what to look out for when doing full throttle pulls and when doing full throttle boost tuning. And in another video, we are obviously going into full throttle or boost timing as well. See you then and goodbye.